Hey everybody, my name is Kelly Johnson, author of the latest book for new real estate agents called Attract and the creator of the Quick Commission Accelerator course. I help new agents get their first listing in as fast as 28 days and then I teach them all of the skill sets and strategies and I give them all the tools and to turn that first listing into their next 40 deals utilizing the concepts of the 4X formula. And that can happen in as fast as 12 months. I've been in the real estate business since I was 28 years old and I'm now in my 50s, approaching the mid 50s. And I'm now giving back to the industry to help people like you. And since the fall of 2021, I began doing free coaching sessions with real estate agents all over North America. And we meet on Zoom every single Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I've now decided to share these sessions with you so you can now listen in on our sessions and hopefully you get some value from that. But can you promise me something? Anything that you learn, can you please apply it? Put it to use. Action overcomes everything. Action overcomes fear. Action overcomes that feeling of stress that we get. Action will cause you to learn. It will cause you to grow. But you gotta get off the sidelines and get on the field and maybe get knocked down a little bit. But you're also gonna begin to experience some successes too. And that's where you begin to get empowered. And that's what I want for you. So please, always feel invited to join us on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's a link below to get you on the invite list. Just click that link and fill out the simple form and you'll automatically be invited when I send out the email every single week. And I would love to meet you. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when new sessions and other videos are loaded. You may enjoy the Kelly's Truck Talks too. I talk about real estate business in my truck all the time. And these short videos are there to help you along with your journey and I get to share a bit of my journey at the same time. All right, well, let's get into the session and I hope you learned something. I hope you get something that you can apply immediately. I'm really excited for you and I'd love to get to know you. And by all means, put some comments in there. Let's hear, hear some thoughts. And if you would like me to cover something specific that you haven't seen on any of the other sessions as we load them through, um, feel free to put comments in there and I'll see what I can do. All right, we'll see you on the inside. Awesome, awesome. Everybody's starting to pop in here. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. I think, um, yeah, seven ways to get buyers. Let's talk about that today. Okay. And, uh, and get into that. And, and sometimes we always talk about this, don't we? Like you, you may have heard this theme come up a few times, <laughs> but like understanding motivation, right? And getting super, super clear on that um, so that we can help them revisit that. Like sometimes people get lost in, in, the, in the confusion of our world, <laughs> you know? and the different things that are going on. And, and I, I really believe that I think, you know, that's our job sometimes is to bring clarity to situations. And yeah. because where there's confusion, there's no decision. Right. Right. Now, having said that, you know, the other part of that, the other side of that is, you know, we can't be, we can't be married to what the conclusion is. You know what I mean? Like if we're, if we're actually bringing clarity to the situation, um, sometimes the true answer on it is this is not the right time. Right. right. You know, and, and, so, you know, we have to be, we have to be, I think if nothing else, if you come to that conclusion with somebody in your conversations and your research and your anal analysis of, of kind of what's going on and you come to say, you know what, maybe, now's not the right time right now, but you know what? Let's keep on tap of things. I'm going to keep sending you information and then let's hit the green button when the time is right. Because, you know, I just don't think that plan is going to work right now. And that is actually a very hard thing to do for most real estate agents. But I'll tell you some, it does two things. One, it breeds trust, like huge trust with your people. Right. And once you've built trust, no matter what happens, at some point, you're going to be doing business with these people, right? You know what I mean? Because the trust is there. They're not going to call anybody else. That's one thing that could happen. And, and then you just kind of have a, maybe a soon or a later 
kind of transaction come out of it at some point, right? Morning, Seth. <laughs> and um, so there's that. And then the, the other outcome that can come out of that as well is that they go, oh, oh, wait, uh, she's pulling back. Like it's, uh, you know, but I really want this to happen. Oh, okay, let's get deeper into that, right? And they go, uh, well, how can, how can we make it work? I really, you know, and then maybe something else will come out of it. And a lot of times this happens, guys, that where, where they go, well, you know what? I've been fighting with my neighbor for the last two years and I just can't stand it in here. And they're in a strata or like whatever, right? Like some extra pain starts coming out that you've never spoke about. They've kind of kept that close to their chest for a little bit. And sometimes when you do that, where you pull back and go, you know what, maybe in order to fit these puzzle pieces together, it's just, I don't see success happening at this moment in time. It's not to, not to say it couldn't work really well, but just at this moment in time, I don't think it's going to work. And you pull back because now you're not the desperate realtor, right? You're back to, this is the plan, right? Like, this is the plan you told me. This is the plan we've been talking about. Now it's up to them to change the plan. So they change the plan and go, well, you know what? I got to get out of here. So, you know what? If it's a hundred thousand dollars less than I thought, and I'm going to be, you know, um, but I, I'd rather just make the move and get all of a sudden the pain kicks in and you're going, oh, okay. All right. Well, if you're like, if you're cool with those types of numbers or that type of situation or whatever the difference is, and that makes sense to you now, you've now reset, they've even done it to themselves. They've reset their own expectations now, and you're able to kind of actually move forward now, but you're moving forward on a different platform. Okay. I know it sounds very cryptic, doesn't it? <laughs> like, you know, because I don't know, there's so many different situations that can come out, right? But, but sometimes that's the thing. If you always maintain, my job is to help you make a great plan. And if you're always, that's, and it's, and the benefit is always for them. It's not for you, right? And the minute you take it away, you go, well, you know what? you know what, maybe the plan's not working right now. That's okay. Let's put things on the back burner. We'll put a pin in it for now. And I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll keep in touch and I'll give you information every once in a while. And, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll make sure. And then when the time is right, when we see that kind of working, let's, let's kick in. Right. And then they go, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. They're not desperate. They're pulling away here. Right. So you've got, you've built huge trust because it's not about you. It's about them. And then there's an opportunity to rejig the plan kind of thing. So anyway, that's a cool one. Um, but there was something else, wasn't there, in there, Kate, that you brought up? Um, I'm just trying to remember now. From the beginning, it was actually quite important. Things are heating up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so the listing is not an escrow yet. Right? Right. Can I get clear on the terminology of escrow? Real quick, is it mean like an offer is accepted, conditions are removed, and now you're waiting for it to complete? Um, well, yeah, just kind of after an offer is accepted, not with the contingencies removed. Oh, okay. So you got an accepted offer that's in escrow. So no, I, I did a few weeks ago and then it, fell out of escrow and we are still having trouble putting it back into escrow. So, or getting an accepted offer is what I should say. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it fell apart. Deal fell apart with the buyer that they, they didn't in our, in our terminology, they didn't remove conditions. So it didn't become firm in our mind with a completion right. date. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so now you gotta, you gotta get a new offer on the table. Yeah. For these sellers. Yeah. And was the offer, I think we, I'm trying to remember now, we did have a discussion about this. Was the offer accepted um, like lower than the list price right now? Yeah, it was, it's listed right now at 7.59. We secured an offer for 7.40. Right. Uh, we were really stretching and um, the parents were facilitating their son and all three of them were on the contract. And they had a loan and then they had a lot of cash down and 
I didn't really get the best feeling from them, Mm -hmm. but they, they put down so much money. I thought, well, okay, this looks pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Um, We did inspections and that went fine. And all of a sudden we get a call for cancellation because uh, the, the buyer's backing out because he couldn't move up here in time for the loan. He lives in another state. Mm. And we think there were more reasons behind that, but that was that contingency that, um, you know, that helped them back out. Mm. So rejigging dates isn't an option. Like just adjusting completion dates to give them time and meet up with that. Yeah. I mean, we could try to revisit that. And I thought about that too. So, um, so I'll, um, I'll check in with the lender and maybe speak to the list, the buyer's agent. Yeah. There's two reasons. Well, one, because it depends on your seller, obviously for dates for them, but if they're, kind of flexible with dates and hey, we'll give you more time. Let's make it work, man. Like when, when can you move out? When can we have a complete then? Let's, let's work with those dates. If they're cool with that, um, that's one way of doing it. The other way is the other issue could be that they're locked in, in a rate right now. And, um, and, and, and there it expires and then the rates go up. If it's, if they can't complete within a certain period of time, that might be it, but I don't think so the way it sounded, but anyway, that could be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Morning, Travis. Morning, John. Morning, Sat. Hey, Matt. Love to see you guys. We had a few people. I had three or four people again. Oh, I got I got some meetings with clients and I can't make it this Thursday, but I'll make it next week. And um, so we always seem to stick with the same kind. We always seem the same number, you know, but it's funny. Um, but this is great because we get to actually concentrate on some things. So this is really good, guys. Um, so today I just thought we'd focus on, uh, buyers, um, just, you know, get some buyers, but let's talk about a few things. Um, John, are you getting that listing that we were talking about last week? You said the meeting went well. Looks like, uh, yes, I will have that listing just, uh, uh, Needs Reno yeah. to get the price what they want, and they want to sell it like us is without Reno. So it's just I don't know what's going on now. Yeah, just trying to put some contractors together to. Awesome. Yeah. Hey man, that's that's a win, man. Good for you. That's fantastic. And that big acreage, you're gonna you're gonna get it and just throw up a big ass sign on there and just promote the heck out of yourself on that. <laughs> No, because that one, uh, no, he don't, uh, no. No, not going to work? Okay. All right, cool. Um, Anybody else want to talk about anything? Anything that's kind of pressing, that's kind of right now that, you know, just we'd like to just bat it around a little bit and brainstorm on to help you guys out. Is there anybody that wants to, has anything like that they want to talk about? I don't have any success with educating the buyers. Mm. Like... Yeah. They ask me what we should do. I say, okay, it's competing bid situation here. Mm-hmm. And I also go back until January and I pull all the data. I ask how many agents will bid and days. So I see each agent how much, how many bids he win and how much he go over. Yeah. And, uh, I said, look, okay, based on this data, you should go that much over if you really love the property and you want it right now. Yeah. And they say, uh, because I say you should go like 10,000 over at least, you know, it's mm-hmm. not the, the property, it's only like 400,000. Right. But was a guy there since January, he won six competing situations. And the that was one he put twenty over asking. Yeah, and the highest he go fifty over asking. Yeah, yeah. I say this guy, you know. I say at least ten thousand he will go over asking. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. 
And he said, no, let's go 2,000 over asking. Okay. And, so here's something yeah. I use on that. And say, okay. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So he don't win, you know. And uh, he was like, well, why they don't counter us? They should counter us. I said, no, they will deal with <laughs> the first one or the second one. Has, you know, I told you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You got one shot here, Bob. You got one shot, man. Like the, the seller has a choice and they're going to choose the best offer that's in front of them at the moment. There's nothing telling them that you're willing to go higher in, in any other way. And I can't even communicate that because they're going to say, well, if he's willing to go higher then put it on paper so we can consider it. So Bob, let me ask you this. If somebody paid X dollars, whatever it is. Okay. So t call it 10 grand over or whatever it is. And they paid that. Are you willing to say to yourself, okay, cool. You know, I'm okay with it. Or would you go, ah, you know, I would have paid that. It would have been worth it to me to get it for that price. Cause if that would go on, if that's going on in your mind, then we need to go there now because this, we, we want to win this property. We got competing bids. These other people are, are being advised by their agents. We've seen all these other properties out there. We know what's going on. In how long you plan on keeping this property? Well, I want to flip it. Okay, different story. But I plan on being there five years. Okay, then you're going to be fine. 10 grand is not going to hurt you. You know, what's the market got to move to give you 10 grand, right? When's the last time you put 100 grand down and made 10 grand or lost 10 grand on, on anything. Like, you know what I mean? You could do that in RSPs and mutual funds. And when the markets crash, you can lose that in a day, right? You know, 10 grand is not gonna kill you, honestly, in the long term for an asset that it always appreciates, right? So let's just think about this because if you really want it, I just wanna make sure you're hearing me say these things. At the end of the day, it's always your decision, but it's also my job to advise you and give you all the information so that you can make a great decision. If you, and if, and if you just, you know, you, at the end of the day, you're going to do what you're going to do. And I'm going to do what you instruct me to do, but, and I'm going to fight for you and I'm going to do all that stuff. But our conversation right now is just between us. And I, you know, let's just think about this for a second. If, you know, if someone's willing, if someone pays a thousand dollars more than you, is that going to tick you off? Right. Like what, what you're offering today, if someone pays a thousand dollars more or five thousand dollars more, whatever the number is. Right. Is that going to tick you off and you're going to go, oh, I wish I would have done that. Right. The other question I have is if you don't get this property and now we're out looking for properties. Right. And we're driving around and we're looking at properties. Are we always going to be comparing to this property from now on if we don't get it? You know, you say it with your smile on a face. Right. Like, is this going to happen? Because that would be horrible, right? <laughs> so sometimes that's just a way to position it to get someone to think a little more deeply about what they should offer. Now, I've had people go, let's offer 100 grand over. And I'm going, Ugh, pull back. I think we can get it for 50 grand. I'll actually save them money. And they're super excited. Like, we, you know, you, you got to analyze it and, and see what's going on. And obviously, you know, but anyway, so... And the other part of it too, Bob, I'm going to check in. I'm going to see how many offers coming in. Like we'll, we'll wait to the last minute before we send it. Like whatever you can, let's be strategic about it, but let's keep an eye on this at all, you know, and if there's no other offers or maybe just one other offer or something like that, maybe, you know, we can have another discussion, but these are things for you to think about right now. So anyway, does that help you at all? Help you a little bit. Yeah. That was a really good way to, to frame it up, Kelly. Love it. Cool. Cool. Awesome, guys. Well, this is great. We're talking about buyers. So um, I'm going to continue it on. I'm going to um, just do a little mute on you, John. Nothing personal. Um, just so we keep it all clean. Um, okay. So what's great right now is we actually have opportunity. Like, this is, this is the market where opportunity opens up for you guys, right? Like what was the challenge before? I mean, we're talking to, we had a few people all over uh, the States 
um, in, in different sessions over the last few months? And, and what was the biggest challenge, right? Um, Des and Liz and uh, Lori, and there's a few people and that, that the biggest challenge was they're losing out. I mean, and we've all experienced it here too in British Columbia, but um, losing out on offers, right? Over and over and over again, writing eight to 10 offers with buyers. And then sometimes you'll write three or four offers. They didn't pan out. And then you actually lose the buyer. They just kind of go, forget it. I'm, I'm, I've had it. Like, uh, you know, I'm over this. I'm, I'm just not going to do it now, which was not a good decision for them at the time. If they still had the capability, um, they should have got something, right? But this happened over the last 22 months. This has been going on. So here we are. Listings are hanging on the market a little bit more, right? 20 to 30 days. You'll even see some that overshot in the beginning. So they're hitting 50 days now, right? Because this two month time frame is starting, we're feeling it, right? So we're seeing all that. We're seeing people adjusting pricing. We're starting to see realtor opens. We're starting to see more open houses now. I'm actually starting to see a lot of people coming through open houses right now that actually don't have realtors with them or they're not represented by realtors. They're starting to come out of out, out from underneath their rocks right now. And they're kind of look, you know, they're, 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 it's like they're coming out of after a Holocaust and they're kind of looking around and they're going, what's the world like, right? And now they're, <laughs> they're coming down, they're looking at houses, but it's starting to happen. They're coming out now. So it's a super awesome opportunity right now to kind of be that person that's, that's there for them. <laughs> Travis is laughing. So, you know, this is, this is kind of, how do we capitalize on this? One thing we know in the stats is 75% of buyers and sellers actually deal with the, the, the person that's on their mind at the moment. So the person that they kind of met either very recently or that's in their, in their, in their mind share at the moment, that's who they deal with. And usually it has to do with some sort of form of contact and they'll deal with. So if you get to meet somebody at an open house, that's not working with another agent. All you need is, is one per open house. That's all you need. And you could build a big business off that. That's just buyers, right? Chances are 90% of the time, they're not going to like that house or there's something about it. It's not going to work or they may really like it. And you get into deeper conversations, but then they kind of go, wow, this may not work because of this or whatever. Okay. No, you know what though? Like, and in areas that you can, you can represent buyers and sellers, Kate, like you can kind of go, well, you know what, even though this is super exciting to you, let's get out and look at a few anyway, just to make sure that you're making a great decision. Right. Um, because now you, when you're in that car with them now, now that we're allowed to do it again, that's where you build relationship. That's where you start to get to know each other. That's where you, you, you begin to kind of even have a little fun, Right. And, and, but you're hearing all of their objections. You're hearing all the things that they're excited about. You're hearing all this stuff. And then they may decide to buy that house. I remember that back in the day, I used to double end 30% of my listings, but a lot of the times we went out and we actually looked at other places first and came back to it later, but then they felt super good about the decision and the price and all the other things. And it actually, at the end of the day, sometimes actually helped my seller in a way too. Not that that's what was my motivation because I had dual agency going on to two walls of agency back in the day, but we can't really do that now uh, in BC, but we can um, open up that opportunity to help them with something else that's out there. And if they want to buy this one, then you get a partner to help or whatever, they get their own realtor. But um, that's kind of how we have to do it out here. But anyway, first one is open houses. Uh, as far as the seven ways to get buyers right now, open houses are actually more powerful than ever. I've got a new buyer, a new lead. I've been doing open houses pretty well every weekend myself over the last two months. And I've got a new lead every single open house, one to two, sometimes three that are now on my list and I'm working for them. And it's funny, the, the, a lot of times actually, the, the plan the, the stuff we're looking at, the product type is not even close to what they, what the open, what was like the open house that I met them in. That was horrible English, but the house I was in was not even close to what they ended up wanting to look for. 
So if I'd never entered into that relationship and had those conversations with them and pursued it a little bit and, and gave value to them, I never would have known that. They would have just disappeared and said, well, I'm not interested in that house and then disappeared and be gone forever, right? Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, could you, we've, we've gone over like, or gone back and forth on times for an open house. What do you think's the most effective time frame like on a Saturday? Yeah, good question. Um, I do one to threes or two to fours. And I'm going to say the reason for that, two hours is all you need. You want to condense everybody together. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you don't, you know, four hours. Oh my gosh, right? Two hours right. is all you need. And sometimes you could do two, right? On a Saturday, if you're doing two hours, two hours, and you have a little time in between to either eat and get to the next one, right? But the... Yeah. Um, and you got to get your signs up and you got to set it up right. And you got to get your signing programs up and you got to do it right. Right. So, um, but yeah, if you really promote it, do good boosts, hitting good target markets to get people there um, and really fill that up. You, you, you prepare properly, you know, during that week prior to where you're, you're telling neighbors and you're letting everybody know about it and you're doing little you know, little mini video things saying, Hey, I'm doing open house on Saturday. Like you're really promoting it right? You will almost guarantee, you will guarantee having somebody there that will, yeah. that you'll get to meet. Cause it, it, I think they're a fantastic way because it's so easy. Like it's warm. They're walking in, they're looking at real estate. This is a person that is, can't be any warmer. There's a lot of realtors out there that say, don't do open houses, open houses, don't sell houses. Who cares? Right. I've sold a lot of houses from open houses, by the way. And, it, yeah. and a lot of times it may have been for another realtor even, right? But I don't care. My job is to sell that house, right? Yeah. And if I get someone fired up because I'm selling the house and getting people fired up about it, and then they go back to their realtor and write an offer, awesome. I've done my job for my seller, right? Um, but at the other part of it is, is my goal on every listing, and I'm going to preach it every single time you guys hear a coaching session, is to get two buyers out of every listing right? Okay. Always have that in your mind. That's always in your mind. I need to get two buyers out of this listing. I need to get two buyers out of this listing. Never forget that. That is, that's where, you know, you activate what I call frequency illusion. I don't call it that. It's called that, but where, when you're, when you focus on something really well and you're, and you're intent on it, the opportunities will come in front of you and you'll notice them, right? That's called frequency illusion. Um, so super important, super important, super important. So plan an open house in advance, plan it out with your seller, do the proper prep, do the proper promo, make sure the neighborhood knows about it. If it's a good neighborhood that, that fits with a high percentage of sales and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. You want to, you want to really get well-known in that neighborhood. Like they're going to think you're the neighborhood specialist just from doing open houses. If you do it right. Right. Okay. So that's huge. Um, so I, I encourage you, you know, don't just plunk up one sign on the Saturday and hope people show up, right? You got to take control of that prior to do some planning, get people there. I talk about it in a few chapters on my book about planning out an open house. It's in the course and there's a lot of things like that. So super, super. And I talk about a whole plan for that. Um, ads. Um, so when you're doing ads now, now think about this, right? Because you can do ads for a listing, right? Even someone else's listing or a listing type, right? And you could do five bucks a day. Travis was doing that. He got lots of leads out of that. But you can do like very inexpensive advertising to attract buyers and using language that they want to hear. And you, but you have to be super clear on the buyer type that you're looking for who they are, what their concerns are, what their challenges are, what, what, you know, what, what is plaguing their minds? What is, what are they dealing with right now? Right. What's, what's the worry that's in the back of their minds and how can you put one sentence in that's going to alleviate that worry? Like, this is how deep you have to think about this. If you're going to do ads, if you're not, then don't even do the ads because it's a waste of money. You really got to think deeply about the avatar of the person that you're marketing to. Don't try to market to everybody right? If you're marketing to everybody, you're marketing to nobody. So you need to be very clear on the avatar that you're marketing to. 
And so really think deeply about that. But ads are super, super effective. And even, and, and so I'll couple that with boost ads for, to promote the open house three days in advance, right? So now I'm thinking about who that avatar is for that house, where they are, what's their habits, what's their hobbies, what kind of, you know, if it's a place that has RV parking, then I'm going to have, I'm going to have stuff about boat, you know, people that talk about boating or RVing or uh, like outdoor lifestyle type people, um, you know, uh, people who are in the construction industry that need to park their truck and trailer. Like I'm thinking about all of these people would really like to have extra parking or RV parking as an example, right? That's just an example. But um, so if the attributes of the house are going to attract certain buyers. So, you know, if it has a suite or income or anything like that, um, extended family, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's where ads can be super effective and you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. Um, and, and where, like where that ad goes to, you could pick where that goes in the States. I think you could pick by postal code. I don't think we could do that out here, but you can pick by postal code and you can literally boom, hit like a neighborhood and it's going to show up in their feed when they're looking at Facebook with all the other stuff that's going on. And, and they're going to see you there and they're going to think that you're an amazing realtor that's all over the place everywhere. But you've actually literally gone into a 400 home neighborhood. Like you can do it almost pinpoint that much. But I would probably expand a little more than that because you want to catch some other people too. But, you know, if you're in a 20 mile radius, honestly, and you think, well, you know what? These people would probably like to sell here or maybe they're renting over here and they would like to come over to here and maybe buy or that these people have big old you know older subdivisions and maybe they're in bigger houses and they're and a lot of these people have been here more than 10 years and maybe they would like to downsize into something like this well i'm going to market to them and i'm going to talk about downsizing and and the empty nester lifestyle and active lifestyle and simplifying life and getting something nicer now and whatever, right? Like I'm going to start talking about different things. So ads are super effective. They can be very effective and I don't necessarily promote paying for leads. I don't, I think you have to be very smart about it, but if you can create a good lead capture type thing on that, um, love to do that. If you guys want to do this next week, let's, um, if you want to even just like get a word document document out throughout the week and and talk about who you're after okay the product type that you're trying to promote so just some little bit about that and then like five taglines like hook lines like um we have a um, we have a little development on the on the south side of Cultus Lake, and uh, I'll put something like "Why empty nesters are flocking to Cultus Lake." That's it. It's a hook line. Oh wait a minute, I'm an empty nester, right? I'm gonna look at that for a second. Um, downsize and put a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. You know, um, is it time to erase the mortgage, <laughs> right? Like things like that, right? Like things that, you know, so just think about a, a tagline that's going to stop somebody from scrolling for a second. It's got to get them out of alpha and get them into beta. Wake up mode, right? And um and it could be a, a, a funny um, gif, you know, or it could be just a funny picture, um, you know, where, a, you know, a really chubby, empty nester guy diving into a pool, whatever. Like, it could be a funny picture. It could be, you know, just a picture of a really nice looking empty nester couple that's just live in the dream and it's all sparkly and wonderful and beautiful, right? Like it could be just as simple as that. And then they go, I want to be like that, you know, but, you know, thinking about things like that. So these are, these are just, I'm just giving you stuff, food for thought right now, but if you're going to do ads, do it right. Think it through, make some notes, um, play around with some taglines. Um, and, and, you know, you can even try, you can kind of split test a couple ads, right? You know, spend five bucks on 
for, for two different ads, you know, five bucks each or whatever, and just kind of split test it and see which one's getting you the most action. You can start to play around with that too. So those are just some things to think about to attract buyers right now. But I would be trying to speak to buyers. Um, one thing could be too, is where it could be about fear, right? Like if you're talking about people that are super mortgage conscious, like, you know, rate sensitive type people, mortgage rates just went up a little bit, right? Is there a threat of them going up again? Right. You know, maybe that's something to talk about. Get in before rates jump again, you know, and then in your, in your long copy could be some people think, well, if I can't get the exact house I want my, you know, my first time or at this moment, then I just don't get into the market. Meanwhile, that could cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And sometimes, you know, I, I've found when I help buyers get into the market, they're allowed to, they're able to leverage that equity and that more than pays for the higher interest rate. You know, like there's lots, you know, you could start to talk about some different things in there. So anyway, put some stuff together. How about, sorry, I've got stuff coming in like crazy here. Um, um, and, and let's talk about it, type it out, have it on a word document or whatever. And, um, and let's, let's, let's go over some taglines and go over some, some, some marketing copy a little bit and just, just kind of see if we can tweak it for you guys and give you a chance to kind of maybe do some things. If you got some pictures that you think you might include, um, have those with you and stuff. Does that sound good guys? Would you guys like to do that next week? <clears throat> Thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Matt's the only person I can see right now. I think John ch took off to an appointment. <laughs> I think he's, <laughs> but that's all good. Um, all good. Um, sounds like a plan to me. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. So let's do that next week. Okay. Um, and then, the, okay. So third one, past clients, right? So start digging into the database, go into the past clients, and see what's there. And, and if you haven't been in the business very long, you may not have a whole lot of past clients. I get that. But, you know, if you've been in for a little bit and you've, you know, over a year or even two years, there's some past clients in there. And, and some people um, have not done something, right? For whatever reason, because of this craziness that we've been through. And maybe there's some past clients that, that there aren't even, it's not on their radar. They're just living life. They're doing their thing and whatever. Um, but I'll bet you any money, there's a lot of past clients who just went through COVID just like all of us did and motivation, motivations have changed. Lifestyle priorities have now changed how they want to live their life, how they want to be with their family, how they want to, um, you know, honestly, there's a lot of people who've gone through a little bit of a transformation in how they think now and how they, and how they want to, you know, be in a home how and 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 the attributes of a home and and they're probably also super conscious on the attributes of their house that are actually aggravating them now <laughs> too right so you know just that conversation just phone calls just you know what i was just thinking about you i know it's been a while you know even if you know even if you've never contacted your past database ever and you're embarrassed to call people now you know you know you could just say you know what i'm embarrassed <laughs> I haven't talked to you guys forever. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed working with you. It's not that I was ignoring you. I just got busy. And uh, you know what, though? I've decided I'm going to make it a priority to make sure I'm contacting past clients. And, and um, you know, hey, how are things going? What's going on? You know, and just talk to them. Don't even ask them for business. Just talk to them. Ask them about their life. Ask them what's going on. Allow them to open up. And allow them to kind of share and feel okay about sharing and just talking to a friend kind of idea. And you're not talking about real estate. You're not, you're not going, hey, do you want to list? Do you want to sell? Oh, you wouldn't believe how the market is. Blah, blah, blah. They're going to ask you, like, they're going to say, oh, how are things going? You know what? It's going great. But like, how's Betty doing with the new job? Like, turn it right back to them. You know, we our instinct right away, isn't it? To get into oh real you've asked me about real estate oh awesome perfect okay let me get on my little presentation thing here <laughs> no like, you know just, don't do that just just talk about them you know spend time on them and and focus on that and then things will open up things will open up 
And then at the end, you can kind of tag it, right? You can kind of say, hey, great chatting with you. I'm glad we reconnected. That's really good. Thanks for taking my call and spending some time with me. You know what? Um, I'm going to, um, I got to get going. But hey, if you know anybody that's looking to do any kind of real estate or need some advice, or maybe they're just thinking about doing things, but not ready yet, you know, uh, love, lo I'd love it if you just throw my name their way. That'd be awesome. Oh, absolutely. We for sure would do it. Oh man. I really appreciate that. That's how I build my business. You know, that's, that's how we, that's how we do it. Okay. Well, have a great day. That's it. It's just a tag at the end. You figure out your little way of doing it. You know, that's comfortable for you on how you would word that and all that, but just a little non-threatening kind of, Oh, by the way, kind of thing. And just plant that seed. When you do that, it activates their brain to think about people and themselves and others that maybe would want to want to do some real estate. And most likely they've spoken to someone recently who has said that, you know what, I'm going to call Anne right now. I was talking to her the other day. You know what I mean? So, okay, that's that. Past clients. So we're all, that was number three. Okay, number four. Um, there's people that didn't want to sell because they didn't know they could buy. They didn't feel confident that they would be able to find a house to buy. That is super real. That is very real. And it was actually perpetuating the problem of limited listing inventory for the last two years. Because the fear was, and it was very real and very true, was they sell and then they can't find a place to buy because they're getting beat out by offers or the numbers wouldn't work. And then now they've sold already. They've committed to selling in the two months it takes them to find a place and finally get one. The market goes up on their purchase 10 to 20%. And that's a very real concern. And so trying to fit those puzzle pieces together was really tough, right? For us. But now there's lots more inventory. There's a lot more things to look at. So you can go back to those people and say, you know, I know that was a challenge at the time. And yes, the market is peaking and kind of leveling off right now. But you know what? That's, it's not, we're not feeling like it's going to crash or anything like that. It's just, but there might be opportunity for you right now. There might be opportunity. You know, if you want, I'm happy to do it. it let, why don't we just get out there, go look at a few places. You don't have to be buying anything or doing a deal or listing your place or anything like that. Let's just go out there and just see if you feel good about what's out there for the money right now. Should I send you a search today and let's pick five or six properties and how, how are you fixed? I'm pretty good on Tuesday or Thursday afternoon. If you want to go uh, look at some places, like I'm booking it in because you know, it's non-threatening. There's no reason. And they may say, no, no, we're fine. We're just going to, we've decided we're going to stay now. Okay. Totally cool. Would you like me to keep sending you some stuff every once in a while? Just let you keep you updated on market activity. Maybe once every two months or something. I'll put you in the calendar for that if, you know. Yeah, that'd be great if you did that. Okay, cool. I'll do that for you. Awesome. Take care. Have a great day. Like, that's it. And then, okay, so that's number four. Any comments on that? Any discussion on that? All right. Okay. Number five. Mortgage partners. So anybody that, and, and you all should have a mortgage partner. I don't know if you do, you might do, you might not. Um, one or two for sure. And one would be from like uh, one, of the, one of the big banks, right? That uh, is, you know, just kind of busy a mover and a shaker or whatever type person. A banker, lender, mortgage officer, loan officer type person for a, for a bank is a good person to just have a relationship with grab lunch with once in a while, grab a coffee with have that, you know, just have a phone conversation every once in a while, just call them up and say, Hey, how's business? What's going on? Like, how are how you feeling? Like what's going on with pre-approvals? Are you getting a lot coming across your desk right now? Like just get a feel for what's going on. And like, what kind of price points are you mostly working with right now? That is a really important question, right? 
you know, what kind of price points are like are most of the mortgages that you're working on, like the purchase price points? I'd like to get a feel for what's going on in the market, the most popular price point right now, and um, and the kind of the the bigger business that you're working on, because that's going to help me with my marketing and promotion to decide who I'm going to go after and try and try and attract, and maybe I can send some more business your way, right? So the the verbiage there is I'm gonna I'm actually going to work. I'm going to spend some money to attract buyers, but then I'm going to try and send them your way, so we can do some more business together. You know. So that's, that's offering to do something for them, right? You're thinking outside yourself. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to, like, I'm a mover and a shaker. I do marketing to get business, right? That's who I am. That's, that's the feel you want to get going on, right? So over lunch, over a coffee, over a telephone call, whatever, that is something you should definitely do. And then the other mortgage partner you need to have is someone that's a mortgage broker that can deal with lots of different lenders and, and they're more of a mover shaker kind of person. And, and uh, you know, they're more mobile, all that kind of stuff, right? So you want, you want one of each because sometimes there's a, every, every once in a while a lender, like of the, of the big banks, they have type, they have certain products that they really like and they have certain clientele coming in and they deal with a lot of what we would call a clients. Right. People have been with the bank a long time, have great credit, have good stability. You know, they've got all their information in their, you know, business profile or their banking profile. So it's easy for them to get. They can prove quickly. They can, you know, or they may have people kind of going, hey, I'd like to do a pre-approval for now just to lock in a rate. And, you know, so they may, they may have people on pre-approval and they're going, ah, I want to get this money going and I need these people to buy a house. Like they're dragging their butts on this right now. Right. So then you could be the catalyst to get some of those deals going for them. And this is very real. And very few real estate agents are actually making this phone call, you guys. So you make the phone call, you, you get together, you talk about it, you go, listen, hey, you got any pre-approvals that are looking for houses right now that need some help, right? I'll get on it, man. I'll get them into something. I'll work my butt off, get them into something for you, right? And then what's going to happen? He's going to send more referrals to you right? So they're a great referral source. Um, yeah, really good, really good referral source. Um, yeah. So that's number five. Is that good? Okay. We're good so far. You guys feeling empowered and go get some, go get a bunch of buyers. Okay. So the next one is, and I do this, I do this every once in a while, things start kind of tapering or I feel okay, I got a bunch of things handled now. It's been like a crazy mess. And I feel like Tasmanian devil have been running around and the dust finally settles. And then it's like crickets for a little bit, right? Like you kind of go, what's going on? And whenever that happens, and it happens to all of us, no one are immune. I mean, we're busy and there's never nothing to do in a day, but the, there are times where I kind of go, okay, you know what? I got to dig in here. Cause I got to, I got to keep the momentum going. And so what I'll do sometimes is I'll go back into what I call dead wood. Okay. And the dead wood would be, um, the, you know, the contact cards or contacts or leads that are kind of in that future mode or fizzle mode or back burner mode, right? That happens, right? Like if you get enough leads, right. And the, the, if, I, I don't throw anything away. Like I have a file of contact car, actually a physical file. Like I know it's crazy. There is technology to throw people into programs, but I need to just do that. I need, cause I remember when I write things, it makes me remember better when I write things down. And, and then when I look at it again, for some reason, the, the additional stuff that, that I need to remember about somebody comes into my brain when I'm looking at what I wrote. Isn't that weird? But for me, that's what works. So not for everybody, but anyway, so I'll open up that file. I'll, I'll open it up and I'll just start going through it. I'll just start going through it. And I just about every time I'll find two to three people that I can contact just to kind of maybe resurrect from the dead, right? And spark up in some way and bring life to a scenario because you never know what's going on in people's lives. Like I've had people where they're on the list and we were looking for something and their life changed. 
you know, I call them up and they go, you know what? Shit. Yesterday, I just got a phone call. Um, I'm getting transferred to the next province and, and we're, we're actually going to need to sell. My gosh, I can't believe you called. I've had things like that happen when I go into the dead wood file, right? So keep everything, man. Like you never know. Like I have your, I mean, sometimes eventually I'll throw it away, but I'll, I'll kind of bring, some, I'll go through it all and I'll bring a few, that guy could maybe spark one day. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to keep that one. And I'll, you know, eventually throw some away after a couple of years, but, but you know, I do do that. And, and I find a lot of times I'll come up with a buyer or two or a seller or two, or at least, or a referral or something will come out of it. I don't know. So I call it the dead wood, go into the past dead wood area and spend some time on it, like an hour or two early in the morning, and then make a plan, put those people on your list to call. And then uh, that's just an activity that you're going to do that day or that week or whatever. You know, these seven or eight people just call them. Hey, I know we were talking about doing this or blah, 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 blah. Is that still exciting to you or have things changed? Or I know it was kind of tough to put together back then. And it, and it felt like we we're looking for the impossible or whatever. But I mean, has anything changed in that? Just I just check in to see how you're doing. Right. And you never know what comes out of it. There's nothing wrong with making that call. That is a service call. That is someone going, hey, you know what? Just check it in. You know, things didn't seem to be like the puzzle pieces weren't coming together before, but maybe there's another way to put the puzzle together, you know, and things are a little different in the market right now. Um, you know, there's, there's more to look at for sure. Uh, things are hanging on a little bit. You can kind of, you know, you can make a decision. You can maybe even have a home inspection. You can maybe even have conditions on the offer. You can maybe even after, you know, maybe look at more than two properties and not have to make a decision that day, you know, like this, this is like a luxury, right? Like, <laughs> so, you know, it's almost normal, you know, like, so, you know, it could be, it could be kind of fun. <laughs> And not so stressful. So, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Like let people know, you know, maybe there's opportunity right now for you. And some people, you know, are selling and, and they're starting to drop prices. Um, it doesn't mean the market's crashing, but that might mean we can maybe make numbers work now. Right. Um, so past dead wood, that's another one. Okay. So after all of all this stuff, right doing research, thinking about the ads, thinking about the market, having these discussions, hearing what people are saying to you, right? When you have these discussions and these phone calls and, 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 you know, through all the different things that are going on now, right? Like you're doing open houses, you're starting to construct ads and think about those, right? Um, you're starting to flesh out the avatar and you're starting to think about the pain points and the pleasure points that people might be thinking about, right? You're starting to think about all those things. So your brain is going into that mode. Um, you're calling up people that didn't want to sell and maybe trying to resurrect things. You're calling up the dead wood and you're trying to resurrect things over there. And, and, and you're having these conversations and different scenarios are coming into your brain. So this stuff is super good material for social media posting. All of this stuff, right? And funny little TikTok videos and short form videos or pointing videos with, you know, words coming up with awesome music that everybody likes listening to. So that gets lots of likes and, and hits, right? You know, for Instagram and for Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So, and, and even doing YouTube videos that are short form type videos, two to three minutes, five minutes, right? probably no more than 10. You don't want to do more than 10. 10 is good though. Like if people listen to your whole video, when you have 10 minutes, that is super good for your YouTube channel and your algorithms. Um, so talking about these things and it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be amazingly edited. It doesn't, but it's speaking to the things that are going on right now. That's pertinent, right? And you're, you're talking about it. You know, you know what? I've been speaking to a lot of people lately and here's what's the common theme that's been popping up in our conversations. Well, I want to address this, right? And you do a short form YouTube video on that. Give some reasoning, put some logic into it, right? Go and do the research, look at the stats, show them. No, it's not that bad. We're not freaking out. Like the sky's not, look at this, right? The sky's not falling. 
right? Everything's good. It's just normal. We're just hitting normal. And we just haven't felt normal forever, right? <laughs> so talk about it. And then you post it. Now you have authority. People start thinking about you going, man, that person, you know, I like, I like the way they logically explain things to me. Or they make me understand it the way I need to hear it, right? And, and that is super important. So that's the last one, number seven, because social media will actually bring people to you if you're doing it right. All of a sudden, you'll get some Facebook messengers. You'll get some comments through Instagram. Hey, you know, we're thinking about selling or my uncle's thinking about this. I sent them your name. You'll get it. It'll happen. And so, um, yeah. So, you know, focusing on the social media a little bit. Real quick on the social media stuff. In For Instagram and Facebook, well, Instagram mostly, if you're doing Instagram, your, your color schemes and your look and uh, like the, you know, uh, fonts, all that stuff need to be super consistent. So it identifies you. So it, it's less messy in the algorithm. So super important colors, like having accent colors on things that you're doing or whatever it is. Um, and style, um, and even even the um, what do you call that uh, when you when you can adjust a picture's um, oh can't think of the word right now um, filters the fi yes thank you Sat yes the filter that you use because a lot of people do that they'll use the kind of same kind of filter on pictures or they'll use a bunch of different ones use a, a, the same one. This like try and keep that consistent as well. The filter, that's just a little tip that I learned. And then hashtag the heck out of it. Okay, hashtag the heck out of it. That's a comment. You do a separate comment and hashtag it. Okay, and that'll get caught in the algorithm a little bit better. So Prince George Real Estate, right? You know, Gardenville, Nevada. Hashtag Gardenville. Hashtag whatever's cool about Gardenville, right? Um, hashtag, uh, you know, any of the sports teams in the area, uh, you know, things like that, right? Uh, neighborhoods, if there's names of neighborhoods, if there's a lake nearby, if there's a, like hashtag all those things, uh, if you're talking about anything that's kind of in concert with that, right? So super important. So um, yeah, so for social media, because you've thought it through now, guys, right? Like you've spent time on this. And so now you can start to think about those, those problems and challenges and maybe some good news stories, right? Like maybe something you just helped somebody and here was the story, right? You can tell the story, right? On a, on a Facebook post, um, do a longer post because a lot of those words catch the algorithm as well, even though not everybody might read it. Um, but uh, that's super important stuff. So where are we at? 10.57, this is pretty good. I'm hitting my time pretty good now, guys. Okay. So that is the seven ways to get buyers in today's market. Was that helpful? I'm going to unmute you guys. I want to hear you. See if, if there's anything else. That's awesome. I think that was no loved it, Kelly. It was laid out properly. I loved it. Beautiful. Good. Anybody else have anything to add or subtract or can test me on or have a problem with or excited about <laughs> I'm excited about new market that's for sure yeah hey i love this market this is a new market for me i came into the competing market when i started i and now this is like oh this is slowing down it's like <laughs> but then i told no this is more normal I was like okay okay <laughs> oh man i know and it's tough to talk from experience if we haven't been through it but you know it, and explain uh, randy actually randy dick explained it really well and i've been using this analogy a little bit but if you're driving down the highway at 160k which is crazy that's insane but that's what our market was <laughs> Okay, so you're driving down the highway to 160K and you're like, oh, there's a cop up there and you slow down to, a, to 100, 110. It feels so slow, right? It feels ridiculously slow. And, but it's actually normal, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, um, in we're, yeah, to translate for you, Kate, if you're driving down the highway at 90 miles, 100 miles an hour, <laughs> <laughs> and you slow down to 
50 or 60, you know, but. Uh, Those Americans, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Was that helpful for you today, Kate? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, guys. Well, you have a super duper week and uh, do that. Commit to doing a little bit of homework and, and let's, let's work. Let's do some work next week. And, uh, and really try and, and help you guys get some good taglines and, and some good ideas for some, for some ads and, and really start working on trying to attract. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate it. You betcha. Yeah, Have a thanks. great week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Hi, new agents. I'm here to save you a lot of time and get you making money fast. Listen up. Timing is everything, right? And this is right now pertinent information for you right now at this moment in time. The pandemic is coming to a place now where we're all getting back to normal. People are out there heading to open houses again. How do you maximize these opportunities? Are you? The market is starting to shift. Less multiple offers. Buyers are starting to have some choices now as the inventory is starting to increase and sellers are seeing their homes on the market a little bit longer. But this is okay. This is normal. And that's an enormous opportunity for you. And this is where being a professional real estate agent who operates properly with the right knowledge and activities and strategies so no time is wasted and you get to commission quickly, confidently, winning business from your competitors is the key now because these other people have been making money in real estate by plunking signs in the ground and then thinking that they're fantastic marketing specialists. This is where the rubber meets the road right now. Some of you could not get a listing to save your life over the last year. And then when you finally had a buyer, you'd get beat out on eight to 10 deals before actually finally getting that buyer an accepted offer. If you got lucky or you lost that buyer because they got sick and tired of the craziness. How many are, were not selling their homes because they didn't think that they could buy at the time? It's more important than ever right now to know how to position yourself as a professional who knows what they're doing gaining massive mind share in the community. You need to know how to attract the opportunities and the leads, and then you need to be amazing at converting those leads into commission checks. I created an online course that is changing the game for new real estate agents because while everyone is trying to figure out how to be a social media superstar but not actually meeting clients to help them buy or sell, you're gonna be filling your calendar with appointments, meeting people in person, making contacts and signing contracts. Everyone out there is told to do fruitless activities without a plan and they wonder why nothing is working and that's not their fault. There's a lot to teach new agents, there's a lot. Nobody has time to teach you properly, it's totally true. Unless you spend over $10,000 per year on a coach or invest in proper training that's affordable, you know, that's why 13% of you are, are, are going to maybe make it. And 87% of you are falling through the cracks. You need an edge, an advantage. You need training that is specific, actionable, and easy to apply to get results fast. There's never been a, a trick to making a lot of money in anything. Real estate's no different. There's skills and mindsets and strategies and tools and planning involved to make a lot of money in real estate. That's no secret. It doesn't happen by accident or, or happenstance. You can't rely on your sphere of influence to make a living, you can't. Door knocking or cold calling is not the solution for quick commissions either. Let's face it, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of confusion out there and that's why I created the Quick Commission Accelerator course. I teach you how to uncover the most profitable sales in your marketplace right now. And then I'm gonna teach you how to go out there and I'm gonna teach you how to get it. And then I'm gonna give you all the skill sets, strategies, scripts, letters to ensure that you win the business every time. Like my one page listing presentation strategy that's gonna put your competition to shame. And then you're gonna apply the power of the 4X formula and put it to work because now as we move to the balanced market, you're gonna be able to 4X your business. What's the 4X formula? Well, here it is in a nutshell. I teach you everything that you need to know to get your first listing in as fast as 28 days and then leverage that listing to earn your next 40 deals in as fast as 12 months. You're literally only one listing away. The timing is perfect. 
Hit the button below to learn more and start building your business now. Yeah, building a business. Let all those other agents run around trying to be salespeople, utilizing a frantic, scattered approach while you're building a business with a solid, actionable plan. Build a business. Huge difference. And I talk about that inside the course. Click below. Let's get started today.